Okay, so something pretty incredible just happened. A bunch of Skyrim's largest mod projects, like the new game scale projects on the way to Skyrim, got together and made their own E3. Creation ModCon just happened, and it was over nine hours of first looks at some of the most exciting upcoming mods on their way to Skyrim, highlighting the biggest projects on their way to Skyrim with a variety of special features mixed throughout. If you want to check out the full stream or the mod projects, I'll have a link to everything down below, but considering I think not all of you be able to watch through all nine hours, I want to highlight some of the coolest things that were shown off during this. Starting off with the various Beyond Skyrim projects. If you're not familiar with Beyond Skyrim, it's going to add in most of the content of Tamriel as an explorable area, but at the time of Skyrim, featuring their own unique stories and quests, and of course, the ultimate goal being you could just walk across the entire continent of Tamriel. And with that in mind, let's first take a look at a familiar location with Beyond Skyrim Morrowind. Here they show off a Dagenfell quest, this being one of the main town hubs in the New North, where we're helping one of the innkeepers with their bathhouse. We get a few shots of the town overall, which looks absolutely amazing. And similar to how we'll see a bit later on with Skywind, you can see how here in Beyond Skyrim Morrowind, there is a massive visual overhaul compared to Morrowind. And of course, it's been 20 years since the release of Morrowind, so that's not completely shocking. But Skyrim's engine gives the devs a lot of possibilities when it comes to all kinds of enhancements. We can see in this town, there's just a lot more verticality visible, towering structures all around this nice market area, but even further, far more detailed interiors that feature just a wealth of decorations and items scattered all around. The town itself is of course coastal and has some unique aspects with that, such as the unique fishing crane that is shown off with completely custom animations here. And we can see via the dialogue that some of the other NPCs will have some reactions based off our player character choices. We are Dunmer here, and the Nord is initially reluctant to help us as a result. But one of the pretty cool new things being added with this mod are skill checks. We have an illusion skill check to use mind tricks to pass through this dialogue. They describe how throughout this mod, there's going to be a variety of Fallout-esque skill checks, and this comes into play a bit later on in the quest again when fixing a broken pipe. We have different options based on our skills or what we want to roleplay as. During the quest, we are working with some of the locals and the innkeeper to build this bathhouse, and a pretty cool feature of this is things will actually progress in the bathhouse cell as you actually get through each quest stage. So you can see the bathhouse slowly being built here, becomes more and more updated as you actually progress things. And you can eventually see the final design, which looks great. It's actually one of those things, like I would go to this bathhouse, it actually sounds pretty nice right now. And other citizens agree as they will actually come to this bathhouse after you complete this quest. The devs even added in a towel item you could wear to truly up the immersion factor. But as I mentioned earlier, the larger goal with Beyond Skyrim is one massive interconnected continent. And there's actually going to be a couple of different methods to get to the new north from Skyrim. A familiar method will just be using a ship from Windhelm, or alternatively, you'll have a cave route that is off to the side, and each of these routes will have a quest associated with them in Skyrim. But this land and region will actually have some changes. We, of course, are going to be coming back here after the events of the Elder Scrolls Morrowind the game, and the devs describe here how there's going to be a broader focus on rebuilding as we're experiencing this world and doing the quest. We even see that with this simple quest with, of course, building a bathhouse. A large event shook everything up, and now we're going to be playing a role in building things back up after that, as well as the tension between the Nord and Dunmer will be a constant throughout this story. But transitioning away from Morrowind, we also do have Beyond Skyrim Iliac Bay, which will be taking us to both High Rock and Hammerfell. In this newly shared gameplay, we get a look mainly at High Rock, and there's going to be quite a few new things coming with this. Of course, new creatures to occupy this world, there's going to be some new castles floating around, and even some new lootables that we could see in the gameplay. During this gameplay, they show off all kinds of things, we find some orcs that have turned to banditry. As we take out this orc, we can loot the newly added leather armor that I actually think looks pretty great. So I've edited the script like five times in different ways to say this, and I'm not sure any of them make sense, but to me, this armor almost looks authentic, like it's actually leather. And definitely one of my favorite takes on a leather armor overall. One of the pretty cool parts about this particular area is how you can see such a diverse terrain in the distance. You look out and can easily see a snow-covered area, which is quite a large contrast to where you actually are located during the start of this gameplay. Werebores are going to be a constant nuisance in High Rock, just as werewolves were in Skyrim. As well as we actually get a closer look at one of the Breton cemeteries added just outside of a town. You can see some of the custom architecture and tile sets they're adding in with this mod, and in particular when you actually go inside of the cemetery. We're able to use the candlelight spell, which is making a return, to light things up somewhat, but overall throughout this crypt there's an existing level of darkness that is persistent. I think it actually adds a lot to the overall aesthetic. These are some incredibly 
grandiose halls that are honestly pretty daunting to enter into. And they're going to be occupied by some familiar foes with whites, although these are redesigned whites for this region. And not only will they visually look a bit different, but they're also going to have some new weapons and armors that will be used by NPCs all over this region. And one of the pretty cool things Iliac Bay did here is not only did we get a preview of this raw gameplay, running around the world during a live stream and clearing out some enemies showcasing the terrain, but they also did have a bit of a more edited trailer of Iliac Bay that gives you a much better view of the vast array of landscape work already done. One of the biggest standouts during this to me is that diversity of environments. You just see a ton of different custom landscapes and of course some familiar and new faces within them. But then with just another short journey away, we get a look at one of the most covered of the Beyond Skyrim projects with Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil, which will be taking us to the lands of Oblivion, but of course at the time of Skyrim, so several hundred years have passed. We've seen quite a bit of Cyrodiil in the past, and this is specifically going to be a more focused look. We get a preview of the town of Mothlight, a small town between some of the major locations in this, and this is going to be added almost as an expansion of the lore, really an implementation of the lore. Cyrodiil has a variety of roads frequented by travelers, quite a few travelers in fact. And although these roads aren't very built up, there's not a lot going on along the roads in Oblivion, for beyond Skyrim, Cyrodiil they actually decided there should be. So developers here added in several small towns to make these areas a bit more interesting. Mothlight specifically is heavily influenced by Nibbanese culture, and you can see this reflected in some of the face art and even clothing worn by some of the NPCs here. And in the time that's passed, not only do we have a new town, but also a bit of a swampier feel. The trees are largely the same, but there's been a greater degree of wetness. You are more in an actual swamp biome now. The side quest we do in Mothlight involves Ganius Peranius. Some people in this small village believe this is a powerful saint, an actual living saint they are interacting with, but naturally some others in the village doubt that. They'll stop you and describe how they believe him to be a complete fraud. This quest has a three-way ending, which speaks to the broader philosophy they're implementing with Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil. They want there to be major choice and consequence not only in some of the main quests, but also in a lot of the side quests or content. Like here, you just have a simple town where you can do a relatively simple quest, but you still have the ability to roleplay a certain way or really choose different sides with notably different outcomes. The quest involves us gathering some potions for this supposed saint, and in the end you'll have a few different options with just giving him the potions, giving the potions to a claimed witch in the area, or even just exposing the saint's falseness to the town folk. And the developers also describe how this is really building off the Nibbanese culture, being a bit more spiritual people in the lore. This wasn't too well represented in Oblivion originally, so now they're trying to bring it out a bit more with this mod. As you venture off during the quest, you can see a bit of the change up on the bind with it being more of a jungle swamp overall. They wanted things to be a bit more distinct here and actually feel like there's a change up from biome to biome as you're exploring. We pass a Gajit camp at one point and they describe how one of the very valuable aspects of Beyond Skyrim overall and working in this large interconnected project is they can borrow things. Here they're actually using some assets made by Beyond Skyrim elsewhere, so this camp looks incredibly high quality. And this will be a broader goal in Beyond Skyrim, hoping to make things feel like they are really a part of a larger world and this is just really one small example of that. But speaking of Beyond Skyrim elsewhere, we also transition over to them. This being on the southern side of the continent of Tamriel and the home of the Khajiit. The team here describes how they are finally at a more established point with their landscape, where things are more representative of what the lore describes in this lush greenery. But that lush greenery does come with some challenges. They have some high grass here and they describe how this has created quite a conundrum during development where these grasses need to be much higher quality because they're closer to your face in game. You're going to see these grasses grasses a lot more compared to grasses in other mods or even just in Skyrim typically, but overall I think things look great here. We also get a preview at one of the first creatures with Herbie who likes to eat some rocks, and some of the other assets that are being worked on as a part of this project. A bunch of the miscellaneous items here, and I feel like these really do paint a pretty clear picture of how unique this region and culture will be. We're just looking at some minor items, but it immediately shows you this will be a different culture and style to Skyrim. From there they transition over to Riverhold, which is also quite lush with some mountains in the background, and there's some unique assets done from farm stalls to even just custom fences made specifically for elsewhere, but also things like custom flower grasses being properly added, which really do add quite a bit to that overall lush feeling. And even outside of the terrain and visuals, there's going to be a few other things going on here to make things hopefully feel a bit more unique. There will be a completely new school of magic for this region, and there's even a consideration to implement some of the Khajiit martial arts that can be seen in the lore, but is never all that well represented in the Elder Scrolls 
Scrolls games. But then in a stark contrast from elsewhere and really basically every other mod, we do have Beyond Skyrim at Mora. This definitely being a more similar climate to Skyrim, but things here are truly frozen over. Beyond Skyrim at Mora is pretty unique in that there's going to be a core focus on survival, more so than in the rest of these mods. Now, wearing clothes outside is deadly, as well as they mentioned, you have to seek shelter at night as things will simply get too cold. Many of the holds here are frozen over, but a special magic allows these remaining at Morins to survive, at least kind of. During this new showcase, we get a look at the Southern Bay region in Atmora. We can see how civilization here has largely fallen, made very clear by the toppled ship and of course destroyed dock, as well as shortly thereafter we get in a brief spat with a not polar bear that does visually look pretty great. But more explicitly, we get a look at some of the nearby tombs, and we can see how the previous inhabitants, and specifically the warriors that were once here, are now new enemies with undead at Morins. So pretty cool weaponry has been implemented for this mod. It definitely has a more unique design. It feels like it represents the age of this area a bit more clearly. They also mention how the ancient Nordic armor being worn by these Atmorans is merely a placeholder. Something much cooler is coming in the future. And as you venture deeper into the tomb, you can see more and more of this unique tile set. This, of course, has been created for the region to make it feel unique. And I feel like for me, it actually gives me more of an unsettling feeling compared to what we have in Skyrim already. And speaking of unsettling, shortly thereafter, we get to meet a subglacial giant that has been driven mad by the eternal frostfall and of course internal hunger that followed. In the broader picture they describe how two regions of Atmora are already complete and a third is fast on its way. For me this is easily one of the most exciting of the upcoming mods not even just in Beyond Skyrim but overall because it does have a unique experience behind it. It feels foreign and unsettling and I think it'll make for a truly unique Skyrim experience when you could play this. But then the first special feature we're highlighting in this video we also get a look at one of the most recent projects to join the Beyond Skyrim umbrella with TES Valenwood, or really now Beyond Skyrim Valenwood. This taking us to a not so distant land that is going to be rich with greenery and diversity. This is going to be a region bordering both Cyrodiil and elsewhere, with tons of alien ruins scattered throughout, and within, Arenthia is going to serve as the main trade hub. There's a mix of Bosmer, Khajiit, and Imperial culture here, but there's really going to be two major groups of Bosmer that occupy this land. The more modernized and urban cosmopolitan Bosmer, which greatly contrasts the tribal Bosmer that are going to be more in the surrounding areas, not in the cities. During this special showcase, we had a look at several of the armors coming with this, and even separately, you could see from the art shared, things here will be quite different, and the team is working on new and unique styles of architecture to implement. And of course, there's going to be a vast amount of vegetation present here, and they do describe how there is an effort to keep performance decent, despite how lush this greenery will be. But then, transitioning away from beyond Skyrim, we also do have the pretty cool presentation from both Sky Wind and Sky Oblivion. These being, of course, the more pure remake mods, recreating more wind and oblivion in Skyrim's engine. The Skywind presentation was actually pretty cool, as we got a direct comparison of Vardenfell in Morrowind and Skywind. So during this entire segment of the stream, you could just see in real time how much better things will look with Skywind, and it's quite a massive upgrade. Like I mentioned before, Morrowind is 20 years old now. They show off a bit of the town of Cool, which didn't have a ton of significance in Oblivion originally, outside the Boat to Souls theme, but one of the pretty cool parts about Skywind is they're not only remaking what was there, but actually applying several upgrades and improvements when applicable. Like with Cool, they're going to be adding a lot more here, and even as just a very simple visual example, you can see the grand arches, which are a defining feature of this location and just how much better they look in Skywind. It is a massive upgrade here. In Skywind, the NPCs will have actual schedules and interact with the environment or even some idle commentary. All of that was missing from Morrowind. And one of the awesome parts of this mod is it's going to be a true extension of that base game. They're remaking the original content and systems, but also adding in modern touches when appropriate. We get to speak to a veteran guard a bit in the gameplay, and this actually does show some of the community-created voice work for this mod. How's Veteran is really steamed up about the Caldera land grab. They say that Caldera is in their territory, and that they should have gotten the charter. Worse yet, they say that Lalu is skimming the top of that Imperial Fat Cat company that got the charter. To me, this sounds pretty flawless. From there, we transitioned over to Nysus, which is a bit more work in progress. But you can see from Morrowind, there is a lot more detail, from the roads to the buildings, and even just your general surroundings have so much more going on. They show off the No Pants quest that is originally in this location, and this is actually a rather big feature coming with Skywind, a reintroduction of the modular armor system that appeared in Morrowind. 
So of course, you could do things like not wear pants, but perhaps even more importantly, mix and match your armor pieces. In Skyrim, the armor system's a bit more blanket. You apply only a couple armor pieces that cover almost your entire body. But in Skywind, of course, you're going to have a much larger degree of control. Do you want pants? Do you not want pants? Do you want to have something on each shoulder? Do you want to have mix and matching armor all across? And they describe at this point in development, the entire system has been remade and re-implemented with two features that will not be present anymore. You cannot wear a shirt under a cuirass, and you cannot wear pants under greaves. But otherwise, everything else is here, even to the point of wearing a robe atop armor if you want to be a true battle mage. Another feature to return is the original persuasion mechanic, which is quite a bit different in Morrowind. Other NPCs have a disposition towards you, this being based on your skills, faction alignment, and other factors. So if they like you enough, you will just pass speech checks, or you have a variety of methods to increase their disposition via persuasion. You can use things like admiration, intimidation, a taunt, or just a plain old bribe. And we can see each of those corresponding options re-implemented here. In Isis, we go to one of the Velothi Towers, which has one of the most clear visual upgrades so far. The Tovani mage that's operating in this tower is doing Dwemer research, and as such, you could find a wide variety of Dwemer things within, from pets to pipes to other things that he has collected and is left here. They describe how it would make sense for this person researching Dwemer items to collect and store just about everything they could get their hands on, and now that's actually going to be reflected in this interior, which naturally, as you can see, is quite a big contrast to how things looked previously. Things were definitely quite barren in the past. Another pretty massive modernization coming with this mod is the LOD, this being how far you can actually see. Things are basically unparalleled. In Skywind, you could see several orders of magnitude further than you could in Morrowind. You can see structures off in the distance, actual locations as you're approaching them. And Morrowind, it just looks like there's a very thick fog that rolled in. And across the entire playthrough, when you're actually experiencing this mod, and if you are somebody who played a lot of Morrowind, this has got to be one of the most jarring changes. It'll almost serve like you finally got a glasses prescription and could see much further than you could previously. And perhaps even a bit more impactful, actually being able to see the cities as you're in the cities. In Morrowind, you basically got a sliver of that city at a time, but in Skywind, you get a much more complete picture, being able to see basically the entire city from one point. The skill UI will also be authentically Morrowind. The constellations will be gone now. This is far more in depth than Skyrim, but all of the skills are implemented and they're working on the descriptions for the various stats and their interactions. We get a look at a Daedric Ruin and the now finished tile set for that ruin. This looks particularly great to me, like a clear upgrade, but definitely staying true to that original style, which at times can be incredibly difficult. But there are other new features like throwing weapons, making a return to Skyrim. And we can see some combat with these against a golden saint. If you miss with a throwing weapon, you'll be able to pick them up though. Multifunctional weapons have been re-implemented with this. So though, staves can be used for their typical purpose of just casting magic. Separately, you could just kind of use it as a baseball bat and smack people around as you need to. And this is actually going to be a larger implementation with the mod overall. There's going to be a fourth hotkey to consider now. You're going to have your right hand, your left hand, your shout, and then one additional key to make this all work. So it's not actually removing any of that other functionality, just adding in a completely new feature. There'll be things like spells for temporarily enchanting your weapons. This looks absolutely incredible with some of the custom VFX that has been implemented for this. And if all of that wasn't enough, even Levitate is making a return. We've seen this in some past trailers, but it looks pretty epic in this one as well, and we actually get to see that uncut gameplay. During the Q&A segment for this, they share a few other details. They do have plans to recreate all of the Morrowind DLCs, but this will be after the release of the main landmass. A few pieces of cut content from the original game will be implemented in Skywind. They do need some help on the front of sound effects for some of these spells being implemented, and a wide variety of animations are being added with this project. They actually have a full animation team, and this is another thing that we could start to see with some of the spells, but there's plans for a lot more and additional new animations to be added. And they are having to revoice all of the characters with this one, but also every character will actually be voiced in this mod, which might be like, wait, what? But no, in the Morrowind originally, there actually were some characters that had no voice acting associated with them, as well as they actually will be adding in some new NPCs, but some things will also stay the same, like children will not be a part of Skywind, those were not in Morrowind either. So it's a Morrowind remake, but of course we also have to talk about the Oblivion remake as well, with Sky Oblivion. This being one of the most well-covered mods in all of Skyrim, and this latest showcase is going to show off quite a bit of the environment, as well as a quest and some of the cool new features coming with this one. It begins with some simple gameplay of running around this world space, taking out some creatures, but things here just look absolutely absolutely phenomenal. 
Sky Oblivion is one of those projects that more so than almost anything else just continuously amazes me with how good this world looks. And I think a lot of this is to do with the weathers and the greenery here. It's obviously a huge contrast to Skyrim. Of course, much better than Oblivion, but also much better than Skyrim, even despite the two being on the same engine. And this will extend to some of the assets as well. We can see some of the weapons and armors being recreated for this mod and some action from them against some of the enemies in this world. I mean, even just the shield that they're using looks amazing to me. Incredibly high detail and both the interior and the exterior side of that shield, and there are many moments during the stream and gameplay that were incredibly photo-esque, like when they are walking up to this inn. It's just a casual moment from the live stream overall, but this looks like something out of a trailer, and I think it's a true statement or testament to how good this world overall looks. During the stream, they work their way over to Bravo. We get a look at some of the recreated guard armor. You can see there are definitely some changes from the original guard armor, but this is clearly a huge upgrade, and I really like the direction they took this. Bravo itself looks incredible, and I think the wood textures are really the big standout feature here. Comparing these in Sky Oblivion to Oblivion, there's just a very obvious and clear upgrade. But also, as you're walking throughout the city, you can see the foliage improvements on full display. There's just a lot more greenery, and it looks a lot better. We get a look at the recreated quest called in the hunt, where we are tasked with finding a missing axe and go to the wonderful looking Fort Grief. And during this quest at Fort Grief, you'll quickly discover things are not as they seem, and as the quest progresses, we get a preview of the beautifully redesigned steel cuirass. But then also a look at the iron cuirass and iron armor more clearly overall that is coming with this project. The texture work from this project in particular is a pretty massive standout, I think. And you can see the consistency from the different armors to weapons and shields, all of it just looking really good. And then we transition to what I would say is another E3 esque scene with just how good this all looks and comes together. Yet this is gameplay from a live stream. The devs continue to describe how their fort kit is made up of 1300 pieces. This giving level designers an immense amount of freedom. And you can see this as we traverse through this fort. Skyblivian forts overall should actually be a pretty big upgrade with a lot more detail compared to Oblivion, this being afforded by the fort kit. And one of the pretty interesting parts about Skyblivian when compared to some of the other mods out there is this is really a combination of three things, a port, a remaster, and a remake all in one. The quest we're seeing, like this quest right here, is literally ported from Oblivion. Many of the things will be identical, and they even describe how, although it's rare, some quests almost work out of the box via this port. But after porting over, a lot of these quests do require further enhancements, so that's where the remastering comes in. They're making things a bit smoother and tighter, fixing things when applicable on quests. But then, as with all of these mods, there is a lot being remade. The armors, the weapons, and even some aspects of this world being completely recreated from the ground up. They take some questions and clarify how the Sky Oblivion project likely won't have pre-releases. The most notable pre-release to date being Beyond Skyrim Bruma. But when it comes to these massive remake mods, it's not quite as simple or easy to chop up a part of this and be a lot of additional work to actually have a pre-release, which is better spent just getting the final product ready. Although they do have a current goal of getting the entire overworld finished by the end of the year, which is very exciting. But also throughout this, as I mentioned a bit earlier, they had some special showcases for some of these smaller or standalone mods that are coming and not necessarily a part of these larger modding projects. Still, being large DLC-sized additions, just not quite on the scale of an entire new game. We first get a look at the foreign lands of Thrust another DLC-sized upcoming mod on its way to Skyrim. This new look focuses mostly on the world space of the mod, but that's definitely not a problem, as this is a completely foreign and unique looking world that the developers are crafting. We can see towering structures to new tombs to explore being implemented, but also some incredible looking items are being added with this. Definitely a dark undertone all throughout several of these. Thras is a location that never fully appears in the Elder Scrolls game, and is known as the Coral Kingdom of Thras, which is definitely represented in the world spaces, and you're going to have these incredibly odd slugman necromancers. They have a long history of attempting to wipe out all of High Isle, and they're technically known as the slowed and look completely unique. Overall, it looks like this is going to be a really interesting and distinctive world to enter into, and really unlike anything else that's being worked on for Skyrim right now. Olin Veld was another one of these special features. This is actually relatively close to Skyrim. It's a day sail off the coast of Winterhold. It previously was home to a bustling city, but as we 
you can see from this gameplay, things have definitely changed. This is another one that has a completely unique and distinct landscape created for it. Throughout this trailer, we can't see a single human as far as I can tell. And it looks like a very isolated and almost scary experience. At points, it almost gives me Soul vibes, which will probably be popular with some of the most popular mods being Souls themed, but it also looks incredibly enticing. This is one of those projects that's been a work in progress for a while now. I've been even covering it for several years, and at the end, we get a proper 2023 release date, which is very exciting. And the last special feature is of Ezrian Yet, which is going to be a new lands mod taking place off the coast of Tamriel. The island itself is home to Black Harbor, which we could see being designed during the stream as concept art, and I feel like this time lapse is actually pretty cool. I think a lot of times, in particular with these mod projects, people take the concept art for granted, but we can see here just how much effort, time, and other things are going into this. The city of Black Harbor will feature a lot of Imperial influence, and the project has been underway for around three years now. The lore for this location is fairly barren, and honestly, most of it is just mentioning how this location is a rich source for ingredients, such as nutmeg, but it's also going to be a nice pit stop between the continents of Tamriel and Akavir, which, to build off that, there will be exploration of Akavir culture in some of the ruins, as well as what was left behind by those people in this mod, and overall there'll be a very clear divide in the peoples that occupy this. Traders in the city of Black Harbor and separatists that live in the smaller surrounding areas. The split both being cultural as well as political. 